Is that tower a spicy boy? A guide to poor decisions, but decisions not nearly as poor as trying to touch an AM antenna by Devin McLaughlin. Let's get started. So I had a buddy who was asking me how he could determine whether an antenna is an AM antenna or an FM antenna. This is important if you're a base jumper because AM antennas are charged throughout the entirety of the antenna. So if you were to hypothetically climb one, you're probably gonna get severely electrocuted. So I went and spent a few hours researching to determine a definitive way of how you can determine whether an antenna is an AM antenna or an FM antenna without just analyzing its physical features. Uh, before we go any further, you guys should know that this is purely for educational purposes. This information should not be used to climb any antennas whatsoever. All right, we got that out of the way. So first things first, we're gonna go to baseline.ws forward slash antennas. And this works for the United States. You're probably gonna have to find something else if you live in a different country. But luckily we have the FCC to thank for all the information on antennas around the country. So we're gonna find ourselves an antenna that we have been eyeballing for a while, or maybe we're going on vacation. So let's go ahead and you know, let's go to Hawaii. Let's say we're gonna go on vacation to Hawaii and we happen to have our base rig and we wanna just look at the beautiful antennas up there. All right, so this compilation of data here is pretty sweet. We have the height, the geographic location, or the coordinates, and then the map of details here. So, 166 feet, that's a little low, more of a static line. 350, nah, we're getting there. Free fall that. 159, it's also on top of a mountain range, that could be cool. Uh, 405 feet, cool. This one's right next to the airport, so we don't have to really go anywhere if we land in Kauai. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hold command and click on details to open that in a new tab. And then first thing we're going to check on this page is the latitude and the longitude. And these coordinates are in NAD83. NAD83 is what Google Earth uses. For FM and LPFM stations, uh, the FCC actually uses older coordinate systems called NAD27. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is convert the NAT83 coordinates to NAT27 coordinates so we can search these in the FCC database. FCC makes this easy. You can literally just click convert to NAT here and it's gonna open up uh, a conversion tool in the next tab. We wanna make sure we follow the formatting here. This is gonna allow us to find precisely the location of this antenna. So we're doing latitude north and longitude west. So 215920 is gonna be the first one. 21. 20. And we want to make sure we add the decimal at the end. It is finicky. 21, 20.0. Cool. And then 159, 10.5. 10.5. And that looks right. So you want to make sure you select NAT83 to NAD27 because that's the conversion that we're doing. Then we're going to click Compute Datum Shift for a single location and. Boom, we got NAD83 on bottom, and then we have NAD27 that we converted to on top. So then we're gonna copy and paste these NAD27 latitude and longitude coordinates into the AM query broadcast station search down here at the bottom. Right at stations within a radius. So for the radius, we're gonna put one kilometer because we wanna make sure that we aren't searching any other antennas beyond the immediate vicinity. If you have multiple antennas, we might get some mixed up and we might be confirming the wrong antenna is an AM antenna, or even worse, we might be confirming that the antenna we are looking at is an FM antenna when it's actually an AM antenna. So we're gonna go and grab these coordinates. For latitude, we have 2159 and then 31.3. 21, 59, and because my memory's terrible, 31.3, 31.3, cool. Wrong way. All right, then for longitude, we have 159, 24, and 20 points. We're gonna round up six. 159, 24, 59, 24, 20.6, 20.6, cool. And then we're gonna click results to next page so that it opens up uh, the results on the next tab as opposed to this page because it does take longer. And then we just wait for it to perform the query search. And the FCC website literally takes forever. It's like trying to send a dick pic through AOL's messaging in 1999. It's just awful. 
So, so we do have a result here, which shows us that an antenna within half a kilometer is an AM antenna, which is very likely it's this antenna that we just searched. So what we're gonna do is click the call sign on the far left. And the call sign is basically, you're all familiar with it, is what radio stations just regurgitate over and over and try and jam down your throat. KNST 9644-2345, MLP2. You know, so this is KUAI. We have two here, ignore the duplicate. One is just for daytime radio and nighttime radio. It's just the way that frequency bands are regulated by the FCC. So we're gonna just open that uh, call sign. We're gonna click it as a hyperlink into a new tab. This also takes forever. All right, perfect. So we have the AM query result here for the KUAI antenna. And we're gonna copy the NAD83 coordinates. And we're gonna paste those into Google just to double check that we have the right antenna location. We're gonna switch this layer and look at that. Let's double check our antenna map. Make sure it is consistent here. Ooh, nice. So this guy wire antenna that's 405 feet is in fact a spicy boy. So that is the name antenna. We can also go in and further confirm this is an AM antenna by running an FM antenna query search. We're gonna actually enter the original NAD83 coordinates as opposed to the NAD27 coordinates. Once we run the FM query, we should see zero antennas show up, further confirming that there are no FM antennas in the immediate vicinity. That's all I got for you guys though. Um, again, this is for educational purposes only. Don't use this information to uh, take a gander at antennas. Um, either way, I hope I can keep you safe, but uh, that's all I got for you guys. See you in the next video.